Hey everyone, I'm Emily Adams and I'm here to give you a health and safety update. You've been hearing a lot about variants, I have too, and about masking. It's a lot. So let's take a second and talk about viruses. They all have proteins on their surface that allow them to get inside of our cells, make us sick, and spread to other people. These proteins you can see on this awesome Lego model are uh, the little orange rectangles. And that is what these cells are going to use to infect us. But the amazing thing about our immune system is that we have the ability to recognize these proteins and to build a response to them. So as you can see on this model, this image, those little blue squares, those are things that our immune system make called antibodies. And antibodies are really specific. It's like a lock and key. So we, as we get infected with something like SARS-CoV-2, build a specific antibody response that helps prepare us if we encounter this pathogen again. The challenge with the variants of concern is that viruses mutate, they change. The proteins on their surface can change a little bit or a lot. And sometimes those changes help the virus and sometimes they don't. So as you can see here, this is one of the variants of concern that protein on the outside of the virus has changed its shape a little bit. That protein change helps that virus get inside of our cells better. And if you've heard the phrase viral load, all that means is by being able to get into our cells more easily, that virus can make more of itself and then spread to others. That's why I'm gonna talk in a minute about why the three W's and masking is even more important now than ever. So as you can see in this picture, the antibodies that we might have made previously don't fit as well on this new protein shape on the outside. So it might, mean, it might mean that we get sick when we might not have before, and we might be able to spread that more to other people. Let's talk about the variant from the UK. This one you might've heard is called B117. So I'm gonna talk about what we know about it. We know that this version of the virus is about 50% more contagious than the one that we currently have in, predominantly in the United States. So again, that's why I'm gonna talk about why masking is so important. We have limited information because this variant is still pretty new. We think that it might be more severe in its consequences than the current variation that we have in the US. We also think that there might be a relationship between age, but we still don't know that for sure. It looks like people 20 and younger might spread this variant more easily, and people ages 60 and older don't. So I'll keep you posted as we learn more about that because you know science is coming at us every day and we're learning new things. There are a couple of other variants, but they're not in Georgia right now, so I'm keeping an eye on them, but we're gonna focus on this B117. So some concerning things about this variant. In addition to it being more contagious, we do know that it is in Cobb County. And we also know that it is spreading, it's experiencing community spread in Cobb County. So what I mean by that is that the cases that we're seeing aren't coming from people who traveled to the UK and brought it here. People who are here are spreading it to other people who are here. Um, and again, that's why we've got to focus on these three W's. The good news about this variant is that experiments have already been done to test the vaccines that we have from Moderna and Pfizer, and they work. They still are able to produce that good antibody response with this variant. So let's talk masks. You've probably heard either on social media or on the news, the idea of double masking. Should we do it? Well, there's not enough data for the CDC to make a recommendation to do that, but there is a lot of good data to show that having multiple layers to protect your face reduces transmission. So I wanna take a minute and talk about things that I've learned and that I'm using with my family and just to kind of give you some practical tips. If you wanted to wear a surgical mask underneath a multi-layered cloth mask, 
the more different fabrics that we have, the different ways those particles are gonna get blocked to further reduce the spread, especially of this more contagious variant. So what about cloth masks? If you're looking for a cloth mask, you wanna use one that's two layers or more of tightly woven fabric. It's even better if those two layers can be different fabrics, but even just two layers of tightly woven cotton are a great start with a filter insert. We also wanna talk about fit for a minute. Fit matters now more than ever. So you wanna make sure that your cloth mask has a nose piece so that you can adjust it. If you can see or feel air coming up over the mask towards your eyes, your cheeks or under your chin, that's not a good fit and you're gonna to wanna to make some adjustments. I've also noticed, especially with my youngest, that he's going through a growth spurt. So the masks that fit a month ago don't fit. And I know that because I see them start to creep down. Have you seen this? Where they just have to keep readjusting it or it goes up on the chin. So we might need to size up our mask or adjust those straps a little bit more. Let's talk filters. So there are filters out there that are called PM 2.5 filters. These are filters that have five layers of different types of material that all do a good job at slowing particle flow. So you can take this filter and put it inside your mask and it will help you reduce transmission to others and also protect yourself. These are meant to be worn for a, up to a week. And so what I do with the kids is on Monday, I just use a Sharpie and I write everybody's initials on their filter so they know it. When the boys get home, they know to pull their filter out, drop that cloth mask into the laundry basket because it's gotta be washed every day. And then when the new week comes, we just toss the old one and get a new one. If you're going to wear disposable masks like N95s or KN95s, or surgical masks, you wanna make sure that if they get torn or wet or soiled, that they get thrown away and you get a new one. And again, fit still matters with those. So if it's not doing a good job of covering your nose and mouth, you might wanna consider something else. And again, we'll stay abreast of recommendations from CDC as they change. What we all want to know is how safe are we in schools? And I'm happy to tell you that there have been several studies published recently that reassure me that we are doing the things that we need to do to keep each other and our community safe. First, several studies have been done by the CDC in several different states that show when we can do the three W's, transmission in schools is way lower than it is in the surrounding community, up to 90% lower, even when community spread is high. So for me, that's a real indicator that keeping physically distanced, wearing our masks, maintaining good hand hygiene have a big impact. Perhaps the most profound thing that I've seen is a huge study that was done and is still being done in North Carolina, involving lots of schools from all over the state big, small, public, private, rural, urban. And we know from that data that there were zero cases of transmission of COVID from children to adults on campus. That just to me, when I read that made me go, okay, I know I can do the three W's. I know at a, as a school, we're doing that. That made me feel so much better. I also can tell you that when school transmission did happen, it was because masks weren't being used. So we got to do this together and I know we can. So we know that whether we're dealing with the new variant or the version that's currently around, the three W's work to protect ourselves, our families and our communities, both on campus and off. So Wolverines, Please keep watching your distance. Please wash your hands, wear your mask, and follow, follow CDC's guidelines for gatherings with people outside of your family. Be safe.